uh, like I was reading that you had actually just started to do sort of the convention circuit. It was like in around two, 2003. What sort of prompted you to, to sort of get involved and start doing some of that? Well, if you, if you know that, then you probably also know that I had been gone for about 14 years mm -hmm. from not doing anything at all, and I just decided to just be private because before that I had a, a back injury. Mm -hmm. And um, so that took a lot, you know, in, in recuperating for that, and then I went into writing, and then I just decided to stay private. And then um, a big fan of mine, Kevin from Chiller Theater, mm -hmm. asked me to come to his show. And he said, you know, for many years um, in the 80s, when I was doing a lot of my big hot movies, um, he wanted me to come. And my manager at that time didn't let me go for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He never told me that. He just said that, you know, I never was able to talk to you personally, but now that I can get to you personally, I'd really love you to come to the show. So mm -hmm. I went to Chiller. And I have to tell you, it was in October, and everyone knows that that's a fantastic show. That's probably the best show, not just for Chiller, but the whole United States and, mm -hmm. and probably in the world. Chiller mm -hmm. is the best show. And, um, and my fans were lined up with boxes of, I mean, posters and pictures and magazines and, and articles. And they were, they were just so happy to meet me in person because that was my first big show. I mm -hmm. had only done Comic Con once before mm -hmm. and that was when I had my comic book mm -hmm. which was called Sybil Danning is Black Diamond mm -hmm. that we wanted to make into kind of a, a female uh, James Bond movie mm -hmm. and we did that comic book. So here I was with my fans and I saw all throughout all my career and all those years what they had collected and how happy they were to see me and every one of them asked me, Sybil, when are you going to do another movie? We want to see you back up on the screen. We want you back. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, I mean, that's why I'm here today, because of my fans. That's why we're all in the business. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you're, if you stay in the business, if you're in the business, it's because of your fans. If you don't have your fans and no one pays to see you, and goes to your movies or buys your movies or comes to the shows, then you don't exist. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was the most important thing. So it wasn't a producer, it wasn't a studio, it was my fans. And I thank my fans, and I want to take this opportunity too to say thank you to all of my fans that were so loyal to me when, even though I had gone away for so long, and even now that I'm back again, it's not easy to come back. But I told everyone I will do my best to come back and try and do the kind of roles that they like seeing me in, which are strong women's roles. Mm -hmm. Well, um, how, how much did you, how, how tough was it to 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 fall into a rhythm with with your roles before you sort of had that that inner, that period where you weren't working to find roles where you had these sort of empowered females um, because the films that you that you started in were were ones where you had to you know do do nudity things like that how do you make sure when you're taking on roles like that that demand those kinds of things of you that they're still empowered that you're in control of them as opposed to being sort of like just a sex object in those sorts of films well the the sexy movies i did at the beginning of my career because mm -hmm. i am from austria originally went to germany and in the 70s, those were the movies that were being made in Europe. And, and sexy movies were, you know, had nothing to do with porn, just sexy movies. And to take your top off or even be nude in a scene was nothing, mm -hmm. because that's Europe. That's very European, and in Europe, we're very free. And walking around nude in a scene, if that's part of the scene, there's nothing to that. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped me when Hugh Hefner came and said, he wants me in Playboy. Mm -hmm. And we did a terrific layout. I wasn't a bunny. I've been called a lot of things in my life, but never a bunny. <laughs> it was a celebrity spread. I had the cover. I got to pick my, my uh, photographer. And I demanded that I be on the cover and it go worldwide. And if somebody wanted my 10-page layout, they had to also show the cover, mm -hmm. put me on the cover. And if they put me on the cover, they had to bring the layout. So I said, because I was nude, and because it was Playboy, I loved it, but because I was nude, I told them I'm going to do it once, and my mother was very upset about it because she lived in this little town in 
Austria and her daughters in Playboy nude. So I wanted to do it right. Mm -hmm. and, and I did that. And even women's groups came to me at that time and said, you know, you're this strong female. I mean, I was already in America doing, you know, strong female roles. This was not in Europe anymore. And they said, how can you, you know, you're, you're, you represent a strong female, a positive strong female. How can you take your clothes off for Playboy? And I said, ah, that's part of being a strong female. A strong female is a woman that knows what she wants and does what she wants. And if she feels that she wants to show her body, that's her right. And it just so happened that when I went out to see uh, directors and producers for a movie, some of them hadn't seen my previous movies, mm -hmm. but they all saw Playboy. <laughs> and strangely enough, I got hired because Playboy was such a huge publicity for me. And it was one of the best-selling um, editions, along with, I think it was uh, Bo Derek and Raquel Welch mm -hmm. and uh, maybe one or two other women. It was one of the top-selling uh, Playboys ever. Mm -hmm. So that's why I go to all the, still. Since 1983, in August, when that came out, I go to every party at, at Hef's, and he's very loyal, very mm -hmm. loyal, and, and that's wonderful. But um, after I did that, um, you know, I had a manager who said, Sybil, you know, you're beautiful, you're sexy, and there are not many women that have the strength you have, and a lot of people don't know your inner strength. So you should, you know, tone down the sexy stuff and, and play the stronger female roles. Mm -hmm. And he went out to look for those roles. I mean, I turned down roles. I, ha I actually had roles, for instance, in offered to me in, um, in horror movies, and I turned it down because it would have been a total victim, mm -hmm. just a, 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 a woman that's there and then she's killed. Mm -hmm. And so I was out with my manager to build a, a career and not just work, you mm -hmm. know, and, and to build a, uh, a fan base and, and to go in a direction. And when I did Chain Heat and played the girl that fights, you know, in, in um, I was the leader of the, you know, the white girls and fighting the black girls. But in the end, we, we team up and we fight against the authorities. And mm -hmm. I was in a restaurant once and, and a, a wonderful, beautiful African-American woman comes up and she says, you know, I saw Chain Heat five times. She said, Sybil Danning, thank you so much. I was on the verge of lo losing my, my job. But I was thinking of you, and I have to fight, and I did, and I got my job. So I saw that I became a role model for women. So mm -hmm. picking the roles was not easy because we all have to make a living, but I wanted to do more than just work. Mm -hmm. And when I went away because of my injury and, um, and then came back, it was difficult because in Hollywood, you know, you're old when you're 25. <laughs> so coming back after all that time was very, very difficult, but I was determined to do it. Mm -hmm. And I saw, uh, I know all the fans from this and any horror um, convention loved as much as I did, The Devil's Rejects. Mm -hmm. And so I really loved what Rob Zombie did with that movie. And I saw in his wife, in Sherry Moon, the character that I played. Mm -hmm. And so I told a friend of mine who comes to all of these two, you know him, and he's in every one of Rob Zombie's movies, wonderful actor, um, Ken Foray. Mm -hmm. I said, Ken, I love that movie. And I said, you got to give me Rob Zombie's number. I want to work with him. He said, I can't do that, but I'll tell him that you want to work with him. So about a week later, I get a call from his office, mm -hmm. and I'm doing, I went in, and, and it wasn't like, let's just meet. It was no audition. Mm -hmm. It was like, have Sybil come in. We're doing Werewolf Woman of the SS. And I, I went in, and they were already taking my measurements, and Sherry was there, and we're going to look alike, and we're the, you know, the, the um, Krupp sisters, and uh, for the first time I have to play again, I have to play with an accent, and we are these German uh, twins, you know? And there I was. And um, so when you say, how did you, you know, how did you continue to do that? I think when you build that, that um, character, 
within yourself and, and the roles you play, like Eastwood. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen him in a movie where he was a victim. Then people see you that way, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's very good. Um, of course, when I went back into the movies, I was fortunate to work with, with Rob. So I did Grindhouse, and then I told him I would love to be in Halloween, and he said, well, it's already all cast, but let me think about it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, he came to me and he said, Sybil, you know what? I have a role, it's not a big role, but it's very important because you're going to be the last person to be killed by little Mike Myers mm -hmm. before we see big Mike. And that was very important to him for the whole character and, and, and his <coughs> remake story. So um, that's a tough act to follow, though. After that, I said, wow, where do I go from Grindhouse and Tarantino's movie and, and, and uh, you know, Rob Zombie? So I was in heaven because I came back with a wham. Mm -hmm. But it's a tough act to follow. And it's not easy because, though I... I don't say it about myself, but uh, you, you know a lot about my movies. Um, I know that um, the press has written that I have been uh, kind of a trailblazer for women playing strong, strong roles. Um, it wasn't easy because in the 80s it was a very macho time. It was the Reagan era and it was Commando and Rambo and all the macho movies. And, and in 1980, I remember it was... Um, um, oh, the wonderful movie um, Gloria. Mm -hmm. But that was the last movie I saw way into the 80s where a woman carried a gun mm -hmm. and was a strong woman. So I did, I'm not ashamed to say that, and I think you know people have to understand B-movies are wonderful. They're only, the only difference between A and B is the budget. Mm -hmm. But Roger Corman does B-movies, but the studios are doing the same B-movies nowadays only within, they call it A, mm -hmm. which is a big budget. Yeah. So um, I was able to do, you know, movies with the Fred Olin Rays and wonderful directors that were doing those kind of movies and let women be the fantasy characters and the strong, sexy women and the women carrying the gun. And, and nowadays, um, it's Angelina Jolie. I mean, everything from Tomb Raider to Mr. and Mrs. Smith is mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. But in the 80s, the studios weren't doing that with mm -hmm. women. So if I was a little bit, uh, you know, part of that and helping women go into those roles, I'm very proud of that. Um, and now I'm looking for my own material if a good script comes along. And I must say, I do have a few things on the table now. I'm very happy because there are a lot of young directors that admire what I did earlier mm -hmm. on and are now either starting up or doing uh, those kind of movies and are asking me to be in it. So it's almost like I'm starting all over again, you know? Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm also um, putting my own projects together. And, you know, I always say if, if, you want to do something, make it happen yourself. So I can continue on in that direction and do the kind of roles, you know, that I want to do. And I'm determined that someday I'll be paying, playing, you know, the role of grandma who defends the ranch with her 12-gauge sawed-off shotgun because speaking of 12-gauge sawed-off shotgun, I don't know if you saw... It just was out on television again. Mm. It was called L.A. Bounty, where I play a bounty hunter. Oh, okay. L.A. Uh, PD police officer turned bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. And I own that character. Her name is Ruger. And um, I have that project that I'm working on right now. It's action adventure, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in talks now. I, I have a partner, and we're in development on a first-person shooter game called Ruger. Oh, wow. So my character is going to be a game. So I'm going into the, you know, into the future with my characters and with my um, projects as well. Mm -hmm.